welcome to the quarterfinals here from Cincinnati, the SCG Tour. Cedric Phillips, Craig Kremples bringing you the quarterfinals here between Ali Antrazi and number three on our season one leaderboard, Jeff Hoagland. It's Green Red Tron, it's Kiki Cord, and we are underway here as Antrazi does get to go first, given the number one overall seed. And Craig, you do like Jeff Hoagland in this matchup. That's who I picked. We'll see if he's able to get the job done here. No bird of paradise to start things off, unfortunately. I'm changing my pick. Okay, Craig has <laughs> shifted his pick. Ali Antrazi is his choice. Ali is going to start by sacrificing his chromatic star. You know, get himself some green mana here, so I, perhaps we'll see an Ancient Stirrings on the way. And there is Ancient Stirrings. Has Jeff, I don't know, is Jeff hoping for a miss here? <laughs> that's, that's hard to do with the Tron deck. As there's a star, a map, a Karn, and an Ugin for Ollie yeah. to select from. You know, sometimes you just got to root for your best interests. <laughs> And Ursa's power plant, there is an expedition map past the turn back. Doesn't look like Gontrasi is going to have turn three Tron, but it looks like he'll have access to turn four Tron, as there's a voice of resurgence. Yeah, I, I uh, may have misstepped here picking Jeff. Ollie's off to such a great start. Jeff is not off to a good start at all. And no man acceleration for Jeff to start the game. It looks like he's taken at least one mulligan here as well. Ursa's power plant, the draw there for Ali, still missing the Ursa's tower. He'll sacrifice this. Expedition map right now, however, perhaps a tower will be on the way here for Antrazi. Completes the Tron. And now Jeff's deck, you know, it's interesting because with Green Red Tron, you know, they can of course overpower you with their powerful cards. But as you mentioned, Jeff might be able to just work his way through that stuff anyway. Yes. So we're going to see because Ali is clearly presenting Tron on the very next turn, even this turn now, with three mana. Yeah, depending on what comes down, um, it might not be as backbreaking for Jeff as you would think. The scavenging ooze here from Jeff, and that might be it for his turn. Yeah, he doesn't even have a third land drop. This is not one of the hands that he can combat the big spells with. Well, I don't like his chances now. I will say that. The only way this works out is if Ali does not have a big payoff card. You can already see Karn in his hand. Yeah, it looks like multiple Karns and an Ulamog in there. Well, that's going to make it difficult to win. Looks like he's going to start off with Karn Liberated. Starts with six loyalty. We'll see if it's going to go up or down. But this is what Antrazi has been doing to people all weekend. He has been dominant here. Number one overall seed has lost one match. And at least right now is making this particular game look pretty easy. Yeah, and when that deck runs smooth, it does some very unfair things. Well, there goes the voice of resurgence. Karn will exile that, and we're going to head over Jeff's way. He'll draw a card. It's a Kwasali Pride Mage, which will give Exalted All right. to the Scavenging Ooze. It's a, it's a small victory, killing the Karn. And now Jeff will pass the turn back. Oblivion sown the draw here for Antrazi. And this is looking like it's going to be close to the flawless victory here. Ah, uh, yes. Your favorite thing is there's new Yeah, Jeff yeah. will make it a flawless victory because he is conceding right away. Ali Antrazi is going to win game number one here over Jeff Hoagland. Green, red, Tron very quickly up a game over Kiki Court. Th you know, this is, this is what it's like to play against Tron sometimes. The deck is just able to flex its muscles in such a big way. Yeah. And that's exactly what we saw there. And Jeff is even taking that one in, in, in step because I he mean, just what, got crushed. Yeah, what else can you do? You take a mulligan. Um, you, you keep a hand that's not doing a whole lot and your opponent just has the perfect perfects. You know, you, you smile and you, you sideboard and you try again. Well, fortunately for Jeff, he's got some good cards to bring to the table here. You'll see the 15 cards, Engineer Explosives, three Lightning Helix, two Slaughter Games, three Stony Silence, a Spell Skite, a Reclamation Sage, a Fulminator Mage, an Eidolon of Rhetoric, an Obstinate Bailoth, and a Linvala Keeper of Silence. Craig, what do you like here and why? Well, it's going to be interesting. Obviously, the Fulminator Mage is going to come in, try to break up the Tron, give him a little more time. Question is, it, does he want to bring in a card like Slaughter Games? and really try to hamstring Ollie that way. I don't know. You know, Slaughter Games is a little slow, but I guess if we're going to entertain the idea of Slaughter Games, what would you want to name? Well, you're going to want to take away his big payoff cards. Okay. So depending on the state of the game, Ollie doesn't actually have that many threats in his deck. Taking a look, there's four Karn Liberated, an Ugin, uh, Ugin the Spirit Dragon, three Ulamogs, and then three Warm Coil Lunges. Yep. So I, I feel like more often than not, Ulamog's probably going to get 
hit. I mean, there are situations where the one Ugin is going to be completely insane, though. Yes. So it, it's it's kind of difficult to say what you want to name. And also, there's an argument, too, for Oblivion Stone. Sure. So uh, Slaughter Games will be interesting to see if Jeff does want to bring that in. Because one thing to note is that Jeff can actually cast Slaughter Games on turn three. Yep. Which would certainly change things. So you see the options there for Jeff. For Ali, a Pithing Needle, two Relic Progenitus, two Thragtus, two Rending Volley, two Spell Skite, two Fire Spout, and four Nature's Claims. Mm -hmm. What do we like here? We're going to see some Fire Spouts, I would think. Okay. You know, try to clear out those early mana creatures, break up the combo pieces. Um, I'm not sure what else is going to come in. I'm looking at the Pithing Needle. Sure. And players have access to each other's deck list at this stage. Sure. So he knows there's the main deck Fulminator Mage and another coming out of the board. Is that worth a Pithing Needle? I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know if that's the case. In general, I think no. Okay. Um, especially Jeff doesn't have redundant ways. Um, to get the Fulminator back from the graveyard. Sure, sure. Okay, that's fair. You know, we've seen Grixis decks, for example, use Kolagon's Command. Sure, he has a couple Eternal that. Witnesses, but that's a little bit slow and clunky. Okay. Um, so I, I think once Ollie gets to Tron, he's going to be able to just do whatever he wants. Okay, fair enough. Well, those are the options there for both players. They will sideboard shuffle up here, and Jeff Hogan will be on the play after a very quick first game. Of course, if we do have updates for you guys on any other matches, we will let you know. But in the meantime, we are going to talk about SCG Game Night, the very popular promotion, which you can bring to your local store, get some fun and friendly organized play in there. Every week in January, you can get yourself Grizzly Brand, and we have been told... Not boxers. Oh, he's wearing a tablecloth. He's wearing a tablecloth, a not boxers. Fashionable tablecloth. Indeed. That is what Grizzly Brand is wearing. As we take a look at February, it's Magus of the Moo. And then for March, this is your specialty here. The Grim Llama Mancer. Which uh, the Twitterverse has deemed Tina. Tina, yeah. I think Tina, a great name. I love it. For the Grim Llama Mancer. StarCityGames.com slash Game Night for more information and for our Canadian stores and players. If you'd like to get signed up for Game Night, uh, we do have we have changed the rates there to domestic shipping rates, so it is a little bit cheaper for you guys to sign up now. StarCityGames.com slash Game Night for more information as we get ready here for game number two between Ali Antrazi and Jeff Hoagland. Antrazi making that first game look very easy, and he's added another top eight to his resume here this weekend. So for Antrazi, this is number 11 here for him, which is very impressive. That's a lot of top eights. He's got two wins, one in Baltimore in 2010, and Baltimore is a pretty popular place for him because he won there in 2011 as well. An Invitational Top 8, make it 2, pardon me. And then, of course, that win in Season 2 of 2015. Though, as we have said numerous times, and perhaps if he wins this tournament, we can get Nick Miller to grill him on the, uh, the teddy bear naming. We're going to figure this out. One way or another. Yep. Before this weekend is over, someone's going to grill him. It's either you or Nick. And uh, my preference, I think you've got the real hard-hitting questions. I mean, we've got questions about teddy bears, about penguins. We're going to find some things out. Our job never ends. Yeah. There are a lot of questions to be asked and answered. For Jeff Hoagland, unfortunately for him, kind of got rocked that game. But this is also his 11th SCG Tour Top 8. So congratulations to him. One Invitational Top 8 as well. Always doing things his way. And this Kiki Core deck is certainly doing things his way yet again. You know, truth be told, the results that he's had with this deck actually quite impressive. Oh, yeah. He's been very, very good with this deck on the SCG Tour, be it in Classics or be it in Main Events. And yeah, Illinois, not too far from here. A, a healthy drive from Illinois to Cincinnati, but you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see him in Charlotte next weekend, too. This guy loves Modern, and he wins a lot in Modern. He, he, he's here to battle. Absolutely. So we'll see if he can come back here. I, at least he's bringing some good sideboard cards to the table. Yes. Because that first game was, uh, well, well, you watched it. Not the most impressive showing for his deck. We, we all watched it. Yep. Not, not good. But Stunning Silence, a real problem. Yes. Very, very hard for the Tron decks to beat. Um, Slaughter Games potentially coming in here. The Fulminator Mage. There are some good options he's bringing to the table. And he gets a lot of these tier two mediocre cards out of his deck. Absolutely. Things like Wars of Pontiff. Probably not real powerful in this <laughs> matchup. <laughs> you, don't think, <laughs> you don't think that's good? Uh, <laughs> it could haunt a Worm Coil engine. Have you considered that? I haven't even figured out how that works yet. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Antras is going to take a look at his opening end, as will Jeff. See if Jeff finds hand he's looking for. I think the most important thing here for Jeff we didn't see in game number one, he just has to have acceleration. Yeah. Got to get on the board and start doing things. Yeah. Turn one, Forest go, I, I don't think is going to lead to many game wins. I'm not going to say never, but I, I think he's got to get to the board early. Uh, he does have a wall of roots in his hand here, and he's taking a long look at his hand. 
and it looks like he's he doesn't look sh that <laughs> sure of himself he's gonna keep but that look is not giving me a lot of confidence do you as a player do you ever run kind of the fake out where your hand's really good and you kind of agonize over it and act like it's not that good um sometimes i think a little longer i don't want to give it away right away okay but i also try not to hollywood too much okay all right I call that the Josh Ravitz. First time I played against him, he agonized over his hand for a very long time. Okay. And I've never been beaten so bad in my entire life. <laughs> Ever. A Nagal bound by honor on turn four. Teller of Tales on turn five. Uh, motion of cleansing fire later. Just, okay. I got humiliated. And, sure. And for what? Yeah. Why? I still hold that against him. Well, I can see that you take things in stride. I do. <laughs> And you let them go easily. I do. Yeah. I, r I really do. Looks like Antrazi going to take a mulligan here. Again, we do have updates for you guys. We will certainly let you know. Andrew Hanks playing Affinity against Todd Stevens on Naya Company. That's our four versus five. Brian Brown doing on Blue Red Splinter Twin against Josh Dickerson playing Affinity. That's our three versus six. And then Bobby Fortinelli on Amulet Bloom against Bill Caminos playing Amulet Bloom. Maybe this is the tournament that gets Amulet Bloom banned. Bill Camino is certainly trying. He said, I am trying to get my deck banned on yeah, Twitter. Well. Watching some games. <laughs> he, he, he's doing a good job. Yeah, he's, that, that's going to be a best of SCG Live moment. That's for sure. Because that was, that was silly. What we watched in round 15. Yeah, I mean, even game one. Yeah, oh yeah, that's the game he didn't even keep. Yeah. That's funny, because I don't even know which game is more absurd. The Mulligan of Five pass... And then Vesuvio land on turn two, Primeval Titan on turn three, or the turn three, play four Primeval Titans, give three of them haste. I actually don't know which one is more ridiculous. It's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> both, both are good. Yeah, I appreciate all of it. Yeah, both are good. I also like that his deck just flat folded to a David Mind Center, too. Oh, yeah. Showing some of the weakness of the deck. Just couldn't operate at all. Yeah, 2 1 flyer. Yeah, it's too much. That's it. Cannot be beat. Antrazi, at least with an Urza's Tower over there. And he's going to keep. So it's time for him to scry. The top card going to go to the bottom. We're underway here with a Temple Garden here from Jeff. There's a tower. Here's a star. Pass the turn back over to Hoagland. Wall of Omens the draw. Wall of Omens, not real good in this matchup. Not in love with it. There's a Wall of Roots. And this is another slower start by Jeff here. At least there's a little mana acceleration involved. Yes. Antrazi, going to crack the star for some green mana. Ghost Quarter in hand. Looks like he's going to maybe start with an Ancient Stirring. The issue here is that he's got Scryings in his hand. Yep. But he doesn't have the requisite mana to keep going. Ah, for Antrazi, Chromatic Star in those cards, also an Expedition map. You see he's brought in Nature's Claim because Stony Silence is a real pain in the neck. Yep. I'm curious what Ali takes here. I think it's kind of a tough decision. I would go with the map here. Yeah. Start building towards your Tron. One could argue about the star simply because that allows you to catch your Scryings, get you a little deeper in the deck too. Sure. Jeff will draw. There's a wall of omens. Draw a card yet again. What did Foothills? For me, the question now is how fast can Jeff combo? Yeah, he, he, like we said, he needs to get it out there. Get some more cards on the board. Um, Ollie's kind of opened the door for him here with this clunky, slower start. There's a Sacred Foundry. Add a green from the Wall of Roots. A Voice of Resurgence is the play. Antrazi's picked up a copy of Urza's Tower. Doesn't need that piece right now. And now there is a star. Draw a card. Picked up a copy of Pyroclasm. Sounds like you're not in love with that one. Yeah, that's a disappointing draw step. He already has a Pyroclasm in his hand. He can't cast either of them right now. Nope. 
And even if you could cast one of them, it would only make the voice of resurgence larger. Here's a scrying. He's on the hunt for a piece. It's Nurse's Mind. So there's only one piece to go. Yes. He, he's in a, a bit of a no-win situation there. He, he wants a colored source. He could search for a green-red source, and then he can cast all of his spells, but he's not any closer to Tron. Or he can search for a Tron piece, but then he can't cast his spells. Quick update here for you. As we're going to be heading back Jeff Swain in just a moment. Brian Brondoon does win game number one here over Josh Dickerson. Blue-red twin up a game here over Affinity. Bird of Paradise the draw. Wooded Foothills the land here for Jeff. The big plan here for Jeff is get to the infinite combo as fast as you can. There's really nothing Ali can do about it. There's a bird. Now Jeff will sacrifice a wooded foothills. See what land he wants to search up here. It looked like Jeff had a court of calling in his hand. He does. And a witness. So the question is, can he search for a piece? Just being curing. Continue. W witness back the court and then search for the other piece. Sure. Well, he's up to something right now with the cord. There is cord of calling. Oh, he's going to get the fulminator. fulminator mage. I like this too. He's got a lot of pressure on the board. Yeah, this makes a lot of sense. Yeah, as, as long as the red source doesn't show up for uh, the pyroclasm, he, he's going to be in pretty good shape. Or just mine was the draw. Jeff with enough mana next turn to one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, enough mana next turn to witness back fulminator mage if he wants. Go that route and still continue to put some pressure on. There's a mine. There's no stone. We're far away from that O stone right now. Yeah, that's for sure. Razor Verge, they get the land here for Jeff. Got to make sure he adds the mana correctly. Doesn't want to make a hiccup there. Sure. He, he started to play a little faster. I think he's, he's feeling that this one is definitely winnable. Uh, but then he, he paused. He stopped himself. He doesn't want to make a silly mistake. Yeah, the, I would say the, the easy kind of cruise control play is witness back, fulminator mage, fulminator mage, your land. That doesn't mean it's the right play. Yeah. I think that's the easy play to make. I think that he might be thinking about what can I do with quarter calling this turn. And that might be the better of the plays. So there's Witness. A lot of creatures out there. I think he has the ability here to get back quarter calling, cord for Restoration Angel. Restoration Angel, Blink Witness, get back Fulminator Mage. I think you're right. I think he actually has enough mana to do that. It's very close. Here's Fulminator Mage, however. We're going to take care of Urza's Mind. The question is, of course, is it worth it to add a Restoration Angel to the board? But Power Class actually looks pretty good now. Yes. It would clean up a lot of these problems. And there's a star. Even the wall of roots has gotten small enough. Mm -hmm. Star will be cashed in. Ursus mines the draw. It's actually a pretty fortunate draw. Yeah. And now here's Pyroclasm. Jeff's going to lose a bunch of stuff. Wall of roots going to bite the dust. Going to be left with an elemental token. That's not much. Oof. And Jeff is empty-handed. Yep. That, that was a big draw step. Yep. That, that land's not going to help a ton. It is a Raging Ravine, at least. He's going to activate the Raging Ravine, attack here for three with the Elemental Token. Entrazi going to fall down to 11. 
Oog in the draw. That's a tower. Got to float a colorless mana. Ghost quarter it. Search up the basic forest cast of Sylvan Scrying. I think we'll see here from Ollie. Yep. Sharp play. Yep. And so now power plant is what he's going to search up. And now the Tron will be complete. One chromatic star. That's all it took. <laughs> yep. And a chromatic star. That cycle in Druid Earth is mine. Like yeah. It was, it was a fortunate set of draw steps there for Ali, to be sure. And Jeff has, lost, Jeff has lost his entire board. And now we can see Ugin come down. We can see Yellowstone be activated soon. It's... It's going gonna, it's gonna to take a heck of a draw step here. Well, Wall of Omens, that's a redraw. Windswept Teeth, not the best. We do have our first match result here, by the way. Bobby Fortinley does win his match over Bill Caminos. Two games to zero. We knew one Amulet Bloom was moving on, just had to figure out who the player was going to be. And it is Bobby. Raging Ravine. Coming in for eight. Yep. Well, okay, so this actually has gotten interesting. Yes. Because Ugin actually isn't lights out now. Because Ugin won't be able to take care of the Raging Ravine. So even though things look like they've gotten pretty ugly here for Jeff because Ali is finally going to complete Tron, I think for Ali it might involve Worm Coil Engine now. Ancient Stirrings was the draw. Yeah, I think you're right. He, Ali just has to go dig in here. Hope to hit a better option. Karn, not going to solve the problem. Nope. Ugin, not going to solve the problem. Ostone doesn't kill lands. Correct. So I think we're in Warm Coil Engine or Bus Territory. Karn is one. Sphere is two. Ugin is three. Grove is four. Sylvan Scrying is five. So he's going to take a, a Sphere here. Ah, some redraws, huh? Have one more redraw. I like it. Another quick update here for you. Brian Rondu and Josh Dickerson, they are all tied up now. Blue Red Twin and Affinity going to game number three. For Brian doing his 14th top eight here on the SCG Tour. Congratulations to him. You know, I have won. <laughs> but your one was a win. I feel like we're kindred spirits. They're basically the yeah. same. Yeah. There is the sphere. Cash it in. Redraws. Yeah, Expedition no. map. All he sees that he doesn't have a lot of options here. Yeah. And I think he's picking up. The ravine actually was a huge draw. It was. There's a map. Pass the turn back. I think it might as well make him kill you. Yep. I have no problem with that. A little more time on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a voice of resurgence. And now here comes Raging. And Jeff not going to miss that one as he is going to win this game against Ali Antrazi. Kiki Kord, Green Tron, getting ready here for game number three. The power class was timely there, and things almost got bad there for Jeff. Yeah, I mean, big swings. Makes for fun matches. Another update here for you. Todd Stevens, Nia Company, up a game here over Andrew Hanks playing Affinity. Stevens was on the draw there, so a little bit surprising to see him break serve. But you felt that he would have enough powerful creatures and timing removal to get the job yep. done. So he was able to get that game. As you see the options here for both players again very quickly. For Antrazi, he'll be on the play. Nature's claims in some capacity you're in because of Stony Silence. And perhaps Fire Spout has joined the party. You saw Pyroclasm was good, so... Pretty good. Fire Spout probably going to be okay here. But for Jeff, we know Stony Silence is in. The other Fulminator Mages in. The, us, the rest, excuse me, is pretty negotiable. Sure. But some good options available to him. So you pick, you pick Jeff for this one, right? I did. Okay. How many times am I allowed to change who I pick? That's, that's tough to say. Um, you started with Jeff. You quickly changed to Ali. After, yeah. After yeah. you saw the first turn of, of the match, mm -hmm. you quickly changed. And now, where are you at now? I'll, I'll let you know after the first turn. Okay. Okay. Per <laughs> perfect. Perfect. I'll be sure to check in then. Uh, in the meantime, we will quickly talk about Caleb Scherer 
our season four invitational champion. And of course, his storm token, given that he did win Las Vegas, you get your likeness on a card. You also get $10,000 invite to our player's championship where we saw Caleb make a deep run. So if you'd like to go about getting the storm token, not difficult to do. All of our open participants, classic participants, and all orders from StarCityGames.com beginning January 29th at noon East Coast time, $5 minimum on that order will get you a Caleb Share Storm token. So congratulations to Caleb, our Season 4 Invitational Champion. Currently number one on our Season 1 leaderboard here on the SCG Tour as well. Looking to go back to that Players' Championship. It was an impressive run for him in Vegas. Well, that was fast. My horses are just coming in here. See, you're good at the prediction game. Yep. You're good at the prediction game. Brian Brondewin wins this match here over Josh Dickerson. Two games to one. Blue Red Twin is moving on. Going to be facing Bobby Fortanley and his Amulet Bloom deck. So it's going to be Bloom versus Twin. Hello. Those are, my, those are the two decks I'm deciding between. There we go. For Charlotte next week. So whatever wins that one. That's what I have to play. Sure. Right? Just Unless you change your mind. Correct. Just, just like you. Yeah. Just like you. Todd Stevens, Diet Company. That's our number five overall seed against Andrew Hanks playing Affinity. That's our five versus four. Um, if we have time to jump that way, we certainly will. But we get ready here for game number three between Jeff Hoagland, number three on our season. <laughs> Jeff smiling at the camera. <laughs> Jeff, number three on our season one leaderboard here. And this is you to our Alian Trazi, our season two invitational champion last year. You gotta have some fun with the camera. Oh, yeah. I used to love it. Yeah? Yeah. Play it up a little bit? Sure. Some fun photos of you cropping up on Twitter recently. I did not hide my emotions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Magic should be a game that everyone enjoys. Sure. However they want to. It's both players keeping their opening hand. Now, as a Tron veteran, when you see someone play a power plant, and nothing else on turn one, you're probably dead. <laughs> that, this is, is a wrap. Yeah, because you played a tower and nothing else, so there's probably a mine coming yeah. soon. If there, let's just say this. If there's not, I'm surprised. Okay. Oh, no, that's, that <laughs> power class is not a land. I would not play that. Might have tipped his hand a little bit there. A, a touch. <laughs> Grove of the Burn Willows, however, is a land. And here is an Ancient Stirrings. There's a power plant in the top five. And there's also a tower. What I think is missing is a mine here. Looks like Antrasi's brought in the Thrag Tusk here as well. A little surprised by that decision. I, I'm surprised by it too. Antrasi going to grab himself a tower of power. The rest will go to the bottom. But Hoopman with a, a, another slow start. Not a lot doing here. So we're going to have to see if he can get a presence on the board. Um, last game, he was out just fast enough to stay ahead of Ollie's big threats. For Jeff, searching up a Temple Garden there with the windswept teeth. He kept his hand based off of a Fulminator Mage, which is a little bit risky to do against Tron, since Tron is really good at rebuilding. And you can see his hand has now become a little land heavy. There's a forest, a plains, and a firelit thicket. Full Nair Mage is going to go after the power plant. He's got to hope that holds up for a little while. There's a tower. Here's no stone. If that's Ollie's play this turn, Jeff has got to be thrilled. Yes. Here's Eternal Witness. Well, we found the plan. Wooded Foothills pass the turn back over to Antrazi. Yeah, with only two towers out. Jeff is in no rush to get the other Fulminator Mage on the board. He's going to have, a, you know, kind of a turn to deploy a threat. And he doesn't even have to blow the Fulminator Mage right away either. Yep. Because there's just not a land to blow up right now. For Antrazi, his draw for the turn was an expedition map, so he's going to deploy that. We'll see if he wants to crack it now. He has not played a land yet this turn. I believe he's played. I don't. Oh no, you're. Yeah, I don't think he's played a land yet, because he was on the play. Yep. Yep.
There's a forest. I'm going to pass the turn back. Jeff will sacrifice the wooded foothills. Get himself an overgrown tomb. And Ollie feeling like he doesn't have to assemble the Tron right away this game. Jeff doesn't have any pressure. Ollie has the Oblivion Stone and the Thrag Tusk in his hand, so he can operate off of five mana for a while if he needs to. Well, after a little healthy shuffle here from Montrazi, we'll head back Jeff's way. We know he's got Full Mage in hand, Restoration Angel in the grip as well. Picked up a copy of Birds of Paradise. He also has that Raging Ravine within his lands. There's a forest. Aggressive. And starting the clock. All right. Vroom. <laughs> well, again, that's a situation, right, where playing Full Mage doesn't really do anything. Yep. Because it doesn't blow up anything. So I actually think that attacking with Ravine here makes a lot of sense. Sure, it, get, it gets some damage in, gets the Ravine a little bit bigger. Um, he's not walking headlong into Pyroclasm. Mm -hmm. There's his power plant. And obviously the Oblivion Stone's already on the board, so he doesn't want to overcommit to the board that way either. And now we're going to go back Ali's way. So, one Tron piece away, though it's going to take two land drops. We'll draw a card. And there's the power plant. Here's a Thrag Tusk. Five life going to be gained. And, and that Thrag Tusk is looking particularly good in this situation. Yeah, with how this type of game is played out now? Yeah, it, it stonewalls all of Jeff's pressure. It gives him more life. You know, Jeff is... Probably going to take a turn here to Fulminator Mage, one of the Urza pieces again. Which means he's not putting a whole lot more pressure onto the board. Oh, you see the Fulminator Mage in hand. His draw for the turn was Eternal Witness. We just got to figure out which way to route, which route to go because I wouldn't be surprised if uh, well, Thratos started turning sideways. Yeah, he might take a turn off, get a counter on it with the Oblivion Stone. But that beast likes to attack. Yes, it does. Just like everything else in this deck. And there goes the power plant. It looked like Ollie was offering him a different land there. <laughs> Well, what a guy. Yeah. Hey, did you consider this one? <laughs> no? Okay. Well, you like to present people with options. I think that's important. Sure. No pressure, man. Just think about this. <laughs> Eternal Witness is going to get back. <laughs> Fulminator Mage. Urza's mind the draw here for Antrazi. There's also that Chromatic Star in hand. I think he's going to start there. Maybe get a little bit more information on what he can do this turn. Yep. So he'll crack this. Draw a card. Expedition map. That one's good, but not great. Okay. There's his mine. Pass the turn back. Jeff now forced to go after mine with Expedition Map. Or excuse me, with Fulminator Mage. Well, we have our last update for you. As Todd Stevens is going to win his match here over Andrew Hanks. Two games to one. So for Stevens, with Naya Company, he's going to move on to play the winner of this match between Ali Antrazi and Jeff Hoagland. I, I appreciate that these guys are cooperating with my picks. Yeah, you're a 3-0 and so far, yeah. aren't you? Well done. And you have Jeff in this one. Yeah. Well, I forgot to check in after turn one. So who do you have? Might as well check in now while the game is formulating. I'll go with Jeff. Okay. All right. Stick with the original pick. Sure. Now here's Resto Besto. This is a lot of Fulminator Mage here. Yes, it is. Now this n amount of Fulminator Mage is very difficult for trying to overcome. Because this is, this will be number four. And, and I wouldn't have guessed that Jeff would be able to just 
chain them like this so easily. Yeah, same. Ollie going to search up a power plant here. He continues to be one turn and one trout piece away from doing something completely unfair. And in the meantime, Jeff is messing with his lands and building up a board. Oh yeah, the, the Thrag just does look good. Um, it's really helping him out, but Jeff is spread out enough. He has a flyer on the board now. He's got a man land. So if the Oblivion Stone is blown up, the creature land can just keep coming in. It seems like a good spot. Yeah. We're going to head back on Trossi's way. He's taking a draw. Ugin is expensive. Yep. <laughs> a little bit away from that one. Yep. Pyroclasm might look a little bit attractive. And maybe Thragtusk is going to come in, but no. That would be aggressive. Yeah. Quarter calling the draw. I'm sure Jeff is trying to figure out, is there a way I can set you up to kill you right now? Well, if he has the cord, and Kiki G he's still in his deck, he, he should be able to cord for Kiki Jiki. Yeah, the, the issue, right, is the O-Stone that's available. Yes. So you don't want to run headlong into that. So I think he just has to keep going this route of blowing up lands. But what also what Jess can also do here is, so if you just look at his board right now, he just played Fulminary Mage, and so he's probably going to want to blow up a land. And if Ali doesn't make a move with O-Stone and doesn't float any mana, Jeff can say, okay, I will core for Kiki and kill you. Sure. So this looks like an O-Stone activation in response to Fulminator Mage. Here's Court of Calling. Looks like it's going to be for five. Oh, mama. He's got something on his mind. The Reveler coming ah, back again. Okay. Yeah, this is pretty insane. All right. It's not Kiki Jiki. Remember, this is all in response to the full Mater Mage. Now Ozone's going to resolve. Reveler will trigger. Witnesses will come back. Ollie gets a beast token. Lucky him. <laughs> Uh, looking for Corda Calling and Revelar to keep this loop going. Gonna kill the power plant. I, this is looking yeah, real somehow bad. Somehow it looks like Jeff is the one playing the unfair deck. Here. <laughs> yeah, it really does. Yep. It really does. And you, you see the power of that one of Revelar. Yep. You think of the five mana spell in this deck, you always think of Kiki Jiki. Yep. Because he plays one of those. But the Revelar has actually been very, very impressive. He's playing a main deck this weekend. And. We watched it be impressive earlier today, and it was very good there. And Jeff's life total isn't even under duress here in this game. Nope, I'm, I'm sure Ollie's very frustrated with this situation. He's searched up so many Urza pieces, and he just hasn't been able to put it together for even one turn. Well, we head back Jeff's way. Voice of Resurgence to the draw. Ali's still sitting on that power classing, hoping maybe he can sweep up a lot more stuff with that. There's Voice of Resurgence. There's Bird of Paradise. And now we head back over to Ali. Nature's claim the draw. The other thing that's kind of notable here, too, is uh, with all this land destruction, you know, Stone and Silence hasn't shown up. And I thought that for the sideboarded games, at least one of them. It, it seems like that would be an important card. Yeah, it felt like it was going to be necessary for Jeff to draw one of them over the course of one of the two sideboard games to win. And he has not needed to do that. 
and Ali is pretty dead ended here. Yep. And you saw Jeff counting up his permanents last turn. He, he's thinking about just courting at the end of the turn and, mm -hmm. and winning the game. And Jeff has such a great idea on how his deck works because, yeah, he can court on the end step and, and actually win the game. Which means Ali has to have something here. So it looks like Ali's going to cast Pyroclasm. Which is not what you want to be doing when you're staring at Revelurk in your opponent's hand. Yep. That Fulminator Mage, those witnesses. So Jeff is going to cord for five. Let's make it maybe four. I think the plan here is get Resto, maybe. I'm going to get Kiki Jiki instead. There's so many different routes you can go. It seems, oh, like, yeah. it seems like none of them are bad. Yeah, e even when the Kiki dies here, it can get convoked back next turn with the Revelar. Ah, right, yeah. It's very true. Looks like he's going to copy Voice Resurgence. Giving him two elemental tokens. Mm -hmm. We pass the turn back. There are two twos right now. And Jeff will draw. Here's six mana. I think we might see him evoke Revelark here. Yep. Yep. Get back Kiki Jiki and Eternal Witness. And. With Eternal Witness, he's going to get back Revelark. <laughs> now he's going <laughs> to... This is brutal. Yes. This is absolutely brutal. My goodness. Kiki Jiki's going to copy Eternal Witness. Is that the angel that I got back? I believe so. Didn't get a great look at it. He snapped it up pretty quick. Yeah, it was Restoration Angel to be able to threaten Infinite next turn. Ten points coming in. Yep. And now Jeff will just pass the turn back. I'll try to see down to seven. There's a, I, I think Ali's a no-out territory yeah. here. Because even if he were to peel Pyroclasm or something, you know, Jeff can rebuild his board. Yeah, he's going to do the exact same thing next turn. Yeah. There's Nation Stirrings. This is actually a pretty impressive display from Jeff's deck because one, he can get himself in situations, as we've seen a couple of times, where you can kill all his stuff and he can just easily rebuild his board. Yep. It's not even close to hard. I, my fear was when the, when the Pyroclasm was going to kill the Kiki-Jiki, like he might lose the Kiki-Jiki forever, but it... N not close. Not even close. And you see just the power of the quarter calling in his deck. Yeah. Chromatic Star going to draw a card. Expedition map is what it's found. Yeah, and uh, Ollie's going through the motions here, but he knows this is... This is all wrapped up. Yeah. Jeff would have to make some sort of insane error, and I don't even know if there's an error to be made. Yeah. And given how well he knows his deck, that is rather unlikely as Corsair of Crew fixes the draw. There is Revelark. He'll evoke this. Get back Fulminator Mage and Eternal Witness to get back Revelark. Now I think he's just having fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And yeah, that yeah, is yeah. going to do it. Yeah, now he can just kill all of his lands, and that is going to do it. Jeff Hogan's going to win this match here over Ali Antrazi. Two games to one. Kiki Kord is going to take care of Green Red Tron. And for number three. Just pick them apart. Yeah, number three on our season one leaderboard here on the SG Tour. He wins his match. Picked them apart, as you said. And he moves on to the quarterfinals play against Todd Stevens.